everyone, I'm Morgan, and today I wanted to share with you the 12 books that I read in the month of September. So let's do it. Um, so I will go, as usual, from the one I like the least to the one I like the most. And the one I like the least in September was Go Set a Watchman by Harper Lee. This one I'm not going to talk about too much because I did film my reaction to it, but I can safely say that this should not have been published and I'm going to be very happy to get rid of it. So yeah, that's all I have to say about it. It's so bad, really. Um, but the next book I'd like to talk about is Apple Tree Yard by Louise Doughty. Uh, this is a thriller and it's about this woman who starts having an affair with a man in the House of Commons because why not, right? And at some point she is raped and she doesn't really want to say there's a whole thing and the only reason I did not DNF this is because this is told in kind of diff two different timelines so like first uh, she is telling um, the story to this man that she's having an affair with but she's telling it from uh, like the the end of the story you know like she's reflecting back on things and so she says that she is in a courtroom at the beginning of the book and from during the whole book you don't really know why she's there and that's why I kept going I just wanted to know how she had ended up there and what she had done if she had done anything and but besides that I hated the main character the woman she was just terrible I think I and totally uninteresting and she was always finding reasons for cheating on her husband and I just I don't know I hated it so much and I didn't think this was badly written however I think that the writing was okay but I hated it so bad and it's also completely stupid really because um, like they just go into cupboards in the House of Commons in the UK and just have sex like it's totally normal I mean there's so much security and like Really, th there's like kind of an explanation to that in the book, but overall it's just so stupid and I don't know, I, I hated this book so much. The third book I'd like to talk about is American Neolithic by someone I don't remember. I read this one because I had an arc from Ned Galley and this is a dystopian book. Uh, set in two timelines so we follow this man who is arrested because um, he's because people say that he's committed murder but um, the thing is that that man is actually a Neanderthal that has been living among humans for very long time I'm not that he he has been living for so much time but he has been living kind of um, on the outskirts of society and so he doesn't look like a normal human and he doesn't talk like a normal human or can read so they kind of try to put everything on him when really he hasn't done anything um, but so we follow him when he's arrested and then two years later when he's actually in prison and people are treating him really badly and the society which is well in the US um, at that time so it's set in the near future is very peculiar and um, there's a whole question of immigration and how they, they treat people like they're not human when really like what is being human like there are a lot of things in this book but in the end it didn't really amount to much and 
I don't know, like I enjoyed myself quite a bit, but overall not a very... It's not really a book that I kept in my head too much. Uh, the fourth book I want to talk about is The Breakthrough by Daphne du Maurier. This is a very short story um, about a man that has to move to the north of England um, to work with this sort of mad scientist and what he found there. Um, so I really enjoyed this. I just thought it was really too short and like not a lot happened. I mean, some things did happen, but it was all so fast. I mean, I get that it's a short story, so like that's ha that's what has to happen, I guess. But I just wish I knew more about this story, I guess. The fifth book I'd like to talk about is L'Étranger by Albert Camus or The Stranger. Um, this is a French classic and I've had it in my house for quite a while. I actually stole this copy from my mother and I ended up reading it actually on ebook on my e-reader. But um, the thing about this one is I was not really a fan of the writing. I mean, Towards the end, I started to get used to it, but like it's pretty matter of fact. It's not about like the feelings of the characters or um, I don't know uh, thoughts that they're having. It's just it's all about what he's seeing and what's happening. Like it's totally it just says what's happening, you know, and that's not really what I like. But it did work in some way. And as I said, towards the end, I thought it was actually okay, but I don't know, I was not a fan. And um, I know I didn't say what this is about, but I'm not sure what I can or cannot say, because there's not really a lot going on. It's about this man um, who meets his neighbor and starts a friendship with him, but then he, well... I don't know, I don't want to say too much because that would be a spoiler, but yeah, he does something for this man that he has just met and um, things happen basically. And yeah, I don't know, it was, it was okay, but I don't know how I feel about this book. Like it's, it's good, but it's not, it's not the best in my opinion, it's not my thing. The next book I want to talk about is The Farm by Joanne Ramos. This I listened to an audiobook and I really enjoyed the audiobook. Uh, it's a dystopian book about this these women who start um, being surrogates for very wealthy men. Um, there's this woman, Miss May, that um, creates this enterprise basically um, that finds these surrogates and um, gets a lot of payment from these wealthy people to, well, put up babies, basically. And uh, so we follow May um, a bit, so the one that creates this enterprise, and we follow Jane, who is a Filipino woman living in New York City at first, I'm not sure anymore. Uh, living somewhere in the U.S. anyway, and she has a kid um, that she's trying to raise alone. She's trying to find jobs, but is struggling, and um, she has this cousin who tells her about this job, and so she starts being a surrogate. Um, and when you're a surrogate, you have to stay in this farm, and you live all together, you're given really good food food and um, really good clothes and just everything is chosen for you and um, this was a book that you could truly imagine um, happening you know uh, which is what usually happens with good dystopia I guess um, and so 
we didn't only follow Jane, uh, we also followed her cousin and other people who were in the farm with her and it was just, it was really interesting but at the same time I, I kind of felt like it dragged at some points though it was interesting and I don't know, it's still, I liked it, I don't really know what to say um, but there was, yeah, there was something to with Sienna. I, I thought it, it was becoming kind of repetitive. But other than that, quite interesting. Next book I want to talk about is Melton in Purgatory by Edward Vass, I think it was. I got this as an arc from Night Galley and I actually really enjoy this one. So as the title says, it's about Melton, this pretty normal guy who goes to purgatory because he dies and it's kind of bonkers and I loved it. It's quite short, like 150 pages, but I mean that was the, the arc. I think it's a bit longer in physical format, but either way, um, it was really good actually and just the kind of weird that I like and I don't know, it's just I I hope it's as weird as that when we die because I thought it was just really fun and I don't know it was just a really nice book that I liked I mean it was weird and I don't know I don't really know what to say because again it's so short so like I don't want to say too much but it was really interesting and I liked the writing quite a bit, I liked the character of Melton and other characters that he meets and just the whole story was really cool. Next is Comment Blondin fut perdu by Jean-Philippe Jean Jaworski. Um, this is two short stories um, that are set in this world, the Vieux Royaume, so Old Realm. Um, there's actually a bigger edition with all the stories that I would like to read because I really enjoyed this one. It's set in this kind of medieval um, setting and, and the characters are really interesting so like I really enjoy this and I'd like to read something else by this author so yes. Next is The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. This is the last book by this author. I really enjoyed his previous book, The Underground Railroad. And this one actually deals with um, similar topics, so like racism and just class in general. Um, so The Nickel Boys is about these boys um, who are sent to this Kind of reformative school and there's a lot of segregation there um, so yeah there's, there's a lot of discussion about racism and I don't know it's just it's I wouldn't say it was sweet but I I don't know I really liked it but I think there I went through it a bit too quickly and I wasn't paying a lot of attention because I did listen to it on audiobook and I don't know I really would like to reread this book because I think some things really went over my head um, but I did like the story and how it ended and Colson Whitehead's writing is always great um, so there's that so I do recommend it Next is Record of a Space Bone Few by Becky Chambers. This is the third book in the Wayfarers series by Becky Chambers and I have loved the two previous books and I really enjoy this one as well. Though I think it's slightly not as good as the first two. Um, this one is set in this colony of humans and it's just about the, lo the things that are happening there, how the colony is organized and just what their life is like and it, I did really enjoy it as well. Um, there 
are a lot of instances of, um, it's just, it's so cozy, you know, this book and this, all the other ones. I would totally love to live in this world uh, with all the different uh, aliens and the ways of living and the traditions. I just, I really love every second of these books and I, yeah, I love it so much. Second to last is The Goldfinch by Donut Hart. I finally finished my reread of this one. It's September and I really, really loved it. Um, I think I might have liked it even better than the first time, though it was kind of different for me. Um, the thing is, so in this book we follow Theo, as you probably know, because um, this book has been everywhere because the movie just came out. I actually saw the movie and thought it had so many plot holes, but you know, whatever, we're here to talk about the book. Um, yeah, so this book is about Theo, uh, who is a kid at the beginning and his mother dies in the explosion of this museum and um, he actually survives and he steals a painting while he's there. He doesn't really need to steal it, but he just takes it. Um, and that painting is the goldfinch. And it's about his life after that event and everything that happens to him. Um, we're actually buddy reading this uh, in August with Tori and a lot of other people. That, and that was really nice. Um, but I did not finish it in August. I read like a bit more than half and I kind of overrun myself with everything that I read in August. Um, but I did really like this reread. I got a lot of things out of it and there were so many things that I didn't actually remember. Um, so it was nice to see and I did not remember the ending either. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I just, I love this book so much. I. I love Donna Tartt's writing uh, because she, um, she's just so good with words, I'd say. Um, I mean, she, it's not like, there is description, but it's not exactly description. It's all in, in the head and I just really can feel everything that Theo feels or felt at the moments in, it, in his life and I just, I love it so much. Uh, this is one of my favorite books of all time and rereading it was amazing. And the thing is, um, it was a different experience this time because um, back when I read it, like two and a half years ago, I would say, um, I was kind of in a bad time. I could not get out of bed in the morning. I didn't know that I had um, some problems with um, iron anyway and so like I was I felt really bad at that time and so I felt kind of close to Theo because Theo really struggles throughout all of his life and so I didn't get the same things out of it this time because I I'm in a better place I would say um, but I got some other things out of it and I don't know I just I think this book is great for anyone. Obviously, like, not everyone is going to like it because the writing is also kind of pe peculiar, like the next book I'm going to talk about. Um, it's It takes some time to read, plus it's really big. Um, but yes, it can be a bit tiring to read because of the, the way it's told, like, you... Um, it's not like the, the book that I talked about before, L'Etranger, uh, where it's all matter of fact. Like, there's a lot that is said in it. Um, and it's just not, just not only what you see, it's really what's going on. And also towards the end, there's like, um, I don't know, thoughts about life and just, I don't know, things in general. And I, I really enjoy this book. <laughs> And the last book, and the one I like the most, is The Moor's Last Sight by Salman Rushdie. I started this one actually in July, but I did not manage to finish it in July, and then I was disappearing in the news. So I finished it earlier in September. 
I really love this book so much. Uh, it's about this family, the Zugoibi family in India. And um, so basically at the beginning we follow the great grandmother, I think, of Abraham Zugoibi. I'm not really sure anymore. I know we follow like at least the grandmother and the mother of Abraham Zugoibi and then his life. Um, so the thing about Abraham is that he ages twice as fast as people. Um, so that's the little thing about him. And other than that, it's just he has a hand that he cannot really use, but um, he's really good at punching people, however. And there's just so much about this book because, like, like a lot of books that are set in India, it dealt a lot with family and family feuds and just relationships in general, which was really cool. Um, but also just the story of the Zogoibi family is pretty peculiar and I don't know, I just, I love this book so much and um, I think Salman Rushdie is one of my favorite authors and like Donald's heart, his writing can be a bit tiring to read sometimes because he does uses um, a lot of language and uh, the the phrases are often quite long and as are the paragraphs so uh, it's something that takes a little out of you while you're reading it but you get so much out of it in the end um, there's a bit of drama as well and just so many things that I loved and I would highly recommend this book so yeah uh, that is all for me thank you for watching and please tell me if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them or what you read in September as I would love to know um, but yeah that's all for me <laughs> thank you for watching please like and subscribe if you want to and I hope to see you soon goodbye Dream I know, deep up my feelings